Hi guys, Paul from VA Brew News. Today I'm going to do my 750th video. What beer do we have picked out? Well, it's a beer in a box. Boxes are festive and they show importance. Fuller's Smith & Turner. The Imperial Stout. A bottle condition Imperial Stout from Chiswick, London, England. Chiswick Lane, South London. Uh, let's see, fullers.co.uk. Alright. 10.7 alcohol by volume. So definitely, definitely a big, 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 big beer. There we go. I don't know if this comes with a card or anything. Vintage Ale comes with a card. Beautiful purple coloring to the box. 10.7 alcohol by volume. Brewed in the traditional style that became the favorite of Russian Royal Court, this limited edition Imperial Stout has been specially created as a single brew. A unique addition to the historic recipe and just the, they actually used Centennial Hops was added. Okay. So I did get a little information. I don't know if I can get this whole thing off in one want to go, I doubt it. 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 <laughs> Isn't this exciting? Watching me do this? I'll tell you what, I'm I'm just trembling. I got it off in one one thing. I'll put it right about here. Sounds good to me. There we go. I like it. Okay, just the Griffin. And the Griffin Brewery, just the Griffin on the on the cap. Smaller version of the Griffin, I think, on this one. All right, label out. All right, just give a little bit of invigoration on the end for the head. Okay. Actually, just a little pinnacle of light coming from the darkness right here, right at the apex of the glass. Okay. Interesting. Not a lot of, just tiny bits of alcohol, like the coating. They're very clear. They are coating now that I'm, I'm looking at it more, but they're very hard to see. Unlike some, yeah, the more I do it, the more it's getting more prevalent of the alcohol ethanol coating, nice proteins and oils. Nice, nice actually, um, creamy, fluffy head. A little fluffiness, a little fluffy. Uh, fluffy head, just on the, on the almost khaki color. Not really dark overall for an Imperial Stout. Just a, a beautiful khaki color. Very, very airy looking. Just t tilting the glass a little bit, watching the proteins rise up the glass. A little bit, a little visual inspecting. Time to get the sniffer in, I think. Cheers. Mm. Well, I'm actually getting a nice, like, sweet caramel in there, too. There's roast notes, coffee, chocolate, a little bit of that baker's chocolate. But I am getting a little bit of um, raisins. You know, raisins, and there's a sweet, sharp caramel note, too, I'm picking up. Mm, more of that milk chocolate espresso nose coming out. Soft bit of, uh, very soft bit of char. Mm. Hoping for more of a, I was hoping to get a little bit more of that kind of unsmoked, like sweet cherry vanilla tobacco, but uh, not so much. But a lovely brew. You ever, you definitely are getting a, like a, a astringent, smoky char coming through as well. It might be a little bit of that earthiness from the Centennial hops actually coming through too. So let's do it. Cheers. That's really nice. That's really nice. It's 
very easy drinking beer. The overall bodies and a, a, low, a low full mouthfeel. I was kind of hoping the well pump wasn't going to turn on. Oh well. Let me compose myself a little bit. And think about some of these notes while the well pump's running so I'm not talking over it. There's a nice peppery, spicy alcohol in there. A floral, peppery, spicy alcohol. I think there is a little bit of that centennial earthiness, little subtle hint of a pine mixing into that back bitterness from the roasted notes. Nice smoky waft from that char. Very faintest hint of, of, of a raisin underneath that baker's chocolate sweetness. The uh, alcohol content, the alcohol, alcohol essence and flavors of that floral, spicy, peppery note are just lifting the ale, giving it a little bit of a different aspect, a little bit of more complexity. It's not getting in the way. It's super drinkable for 10.7%. Everything's blended down really nicely already. I don't have any idea of the date on this. Best before 2023, so there you go. Excellent. Just in case you have one, 2023 is, is fine. I don't think they date their bottles so much. I didn't see a vintage. I didn't know if there's, there was a, a vintage, vintaging system with this or not. They might put 10 years on it, which would make sense. So it might be a 2013. Um, I'm gonna let me know if you guys know how the dating system works because it says best uh, before the end of 2023. I'm gonna assume they put 10 years on that, so I'm gonna assume this is a 2013, which would make sense why the booze is so well rounded and accenting the beer so nicely and being so smooth at the same time. Okay guys, just wanted to start the camera over again, shake the bottle up and pour a little bit of that uh, bottle conditioning in, see, see what, what kind of bottle conditioning I could get going through here. It, there's definitely some bottle conditioning in because the ruby hues now have faded, faded tremens, uh, immensely. Ah, that's really funny because now you have a little bit more of that raisin and almost, excuse me, Almost the faintest hint of a star anise kind of a quality, way, way in the back. Yeah, definitely, definitely a star anise kind of a black licorice note coming coming out now. That yeast, that that bottle conditioning has added another layer, layer of complexity to this beer. Added another layer of creaminess to it too as you drink it. Yeah. Actually, there's a more pronounced, and this is surprising, unless it's a kind of a dry hopped idea. I'm not really sure. There's a little bit more of a bitey bitterness now as well, too. A lingering. It could be an, an atanic, uh, a stringent atanic uh, malt base doing that, but. It seems to be a little bit more profound now since you added the bottle conditioning. It's pretty interesting. The creaminess is a little bit touch more of the sweetness too. The strangest thing is um, I do like this, but I think I think I prefer the non-bottle condition version of it, like the, without the bottle condition. I don't know. It has a, a more of a visceral feel to it, more bold and blunt and brash, and I like that. This one's more subdued, more creamy. Everything's getting wrapped in this layer of a, of a creamy mouthfeel. And that soft star anise note 
is coming through because of the yeast. All, overall, it's a beautiful beer. It's a beautiful beer. I'm really glad uh, to do it on my seven, 750th uh, video. I want to thank Average Joe for giving me this bottle. And I believe uh, I don't want to screw it up. I probably will anyway. So I'm going to say two guys, and they could both be wrong, but I want to give. I want to try. Um, it was either Ewart that got this for me and got it and got it to Joe, or it was Aaron. So I want to thank whoever it was, man. Thanks a lot because I've been dying to try this. Yeah, Fuller Smith and Turner is one of my top top breweries that I just love their beer. So it was really a pleasure to try this, and it's been a pleasure sharing it for 750 videos. That's insane for me, because I never thought I'd get 100. So, and I wouldn't do it if it wasn't for the community pushing me on, and getting me active, and talking, and having a good time. So, this guys, this is for you. So, cheers. Fuller Smith and Turtle Imperial Stout. It's got layers of complexity that are absolutely beautiful. I prefer it a little bit with, um, I think overall for me, if you want to get a little bit of that creaminess, creaminess away that blends those flavors together, and you want to eat, you're not really a big fan of that star anise kind of note that it brings up. I would just say just do it without the bottle conditioning. Get a bigger glass, pour it in here, take your time. I'm serving it now at 60 degrees. It's a beautiful beer. It has lingering flavors. Really well done. Um, overall, probably going to give it around 9.5. I really do enjoy this beer quite a bit. Um, there's not too much to say other than that. It's just one of those really great beers. Really great beers. And I'm really glad I got a chance to try it. I'm going to save the box and save the bottle and everything. So. Ugh. Until then, I just I'm going to dump this in. Dump this in. Going to take a picture of it for the Facebook page. And yeah. Until we meet again, this has been Paul from PA Brew News, celebrating my 750th video. Cheers.